this is Daniel Grove and in this video I'm going to walk you through some of the most popular modifiers in Blender. In this video we'll be covering the Array, Bevel, Boolean, and Mirror modifiers. Okay, let's get started. So with the cube added to my scene, let's go over to the Modifiers tab, which is a wrench. I'm going to expand this a little bit in case we need some more room. And here it is, Add Modifier. We've got a bunch of different categories of modifiers. We're going to be looking at the ones in the Generate column in this video. So click on Array, and here we have the Array Modifier. Modifiers can be collapsed or expanded to save room, and they stack from the top down. So if you have a whole bunch of modifiers, the top is the first one, and then they go downwards in that direction. Now you may have noticed the cube looks like it just got wider. What's happening is the array modifier is making two copies of the cube. If you increase the value of this to two, now the cube is being offset and there's only two copies. As you increase the count number, the number of arrayed cubes increases as well. In this drop down here, we have three different settings. Fixed count, which is of course we type in how many cubes we want. The second one is fit length. So we actually call it a measurement say 10 meters worth of cubes, and it will fit however many it can within that, given your settings down here. And the third one is fit curve. You have to choose a Bezier curve here, and it will make as many cubes as it needs to to fit the length of that curve, although they will still be going in a straight line. But let's go back to the first one. Fixed count is more common. Now we do have X, Y, and Z here, so we can offset our array with all three of these coordinates at different numbers, and we can get a diagonal line, or if we add an empty, go back to the cube, check object offset and select that empty, we can now use the empty object to basically mess with how our cubes are being arrayed. To make a circular pattern, I'm going to put this first coordinate at one and the others at zero. I'm going to go to an above view, zoom out a little bit. If you hit the number seven on your keypad, it will bring you to a, a flat above view. Now with my empty selected, I can rotate this and if I rotate it just right, I can get a perfect circle. You can of course do math to calculate what that rotation needs to be based on how many cubes you have. That is a fun way to use the array modifier. Let me get rid of that object offset there. Now let's say we have a texture assigned to our cubes like this, but we don't want the texture to be tiling and repeating across the scene. So one way to fix that is by using the U and V offset. This will move the texture based on UV coordinates uh, for each cube and that is a nice way to add some randomization and variation to your textures. Okay, now before we move on to the next modifier, I wanna show you what these buttons do up here. We've got four different buttons on every modifier. The first one is the render button. If this is turned off, this modifier will not be included in the final render. So always keep that on unless you want to disable a modifier. Second one is real time. So if you turn this off, it will not be calculated in the viewport. It'll still be rendered, but it's not being processed in this view. Second option is edit mode. With this turned on, if I go into edit mode of this cube, which is tab, I can still see what the modifier is doing. With this turned off, I cannot. So let's turn that back on. And the fourth option is the on cage. So with this option turned on, I can actually grab faces or edges or vertices of the arrayed instances of this cube, and I can edit them, but it's really just editing the original back here. With it turned off, you cannot select or edit the arrayed cubes, you can only edit the original. Now, if I hit the apply button, that's going to basically finalize this modifier and bake it into the cube. Now, if I go into edit mode, these are all completely separate pieces that have been finalized and modified uh, for good. It's a destructive editing technique, not very common. Modifiers are used because they're non-destructive. So normally you wanna keep your modifiers on there unless you really have to finalize it and apply it. So to get rid of the array modifier, let's go to the X and click on it. Now let's go to the add modifier dropdown and let's choose bevel. I'm gonna press the period button on my number key to zoom into my selected object. Now the first setting you see on the bevel modifier is the offset. Now as we increase this, we see that our bevel increases in size. You can choose to do it by offset, width, depth, or percent. This diagram shows you what exactly each of those settings mean, but normally I just leave it at offset. If we turn on only vertices, now the bevel is no longer on the edges, it's on the vertices, on the corners. Clamp overlap, make sure that the beveled edges do not overlap and make some crazy meshes. If I turn this off, I can turn the offset up so high that things get destroyed and bad and weird. Now you may like that effect, but generally you don't want overlapping faces like that, so the clamp overlap helps a lot. However, if you have a very complex mesh, 
you may not be able to get very much out of the bevel modifier. So in some cases, you may want to turn that off. I'm going to turn my offset up a bit so that you can see what segments do. As I increase the number of segments, it's basically subdividing and adding more segments to the bevel. Now you've got a nice, smooth, organic bevel. Profile at 0.5 gives you the typical rounded bevel. Now if we bring this down from 0.5, we get a flat and then inverted. If we go all the way down, we get a negative flat profile. So as we go up, we go back to flat, rounded, and if you keep going, it kind of pushes it outwards to the extreme and you get more of a subtle edge bevel. But I'm gonna keep this at 0.5 for this example. Material is pretty cool. You can assign a material to only the beveled edges. So I'm gonna to go to my materials tab, make a blue material. Now I'm going to create material and I'm going to give it a red color. Let's go back to our modifier and choose material not zero, but one. So the zero slot is blue, which is the base material, and the first slot is actually the red one. So the modifier is adding a red color to the beveled edges that it is creating. And if we adjust it, we can see it's following with the bevel modifier. Limit method tells the modifier to not add a bevel based on these settings. So if we select angle, and if we bring this over 90, all the angles over 90 will no longer have a bevel. Now all the angles here are 90, so let me do a few adjustments to this mesh to show you what this is really doing. Okay, I added a few additional angles so we can see what this is doing. Now it's at 90 degrees. Once I go below that, all the 90 degree angles are getting beveled. As I continue to drop it, it's basically lowering the threshold. See that angle got a bevel. Now those angles got a bevel because the angle is much more obtuse and lower. So if you only want your sharp edges to be beveled, put it right below 90 and you'll be good to go. The third option here is weight. So now, as you can see with weight turned on, there's really no beveling happening at all. That's because the weight of all these edges has not been set to anything. So to do that, go into edit mode, go into edge select. I'm gonna grab a few edges here that I want to be beveled. This is a great method to use because you have complete control over which edges get beveled and which don't. So with a few edges selected, I'm gonna press in, go to item, and turn up my mean bevel weight. Now, as I increase this, the bevel increases as well. This is awesome because we can add just a little bit of bevel or a whole lot of bevel. It's completely up to you. All right, let's get rid of the bevel modifier and move on to the third modifier of the video, which is the Boolean. Boolean allows you to use one mesh to cut out a shape or to join a shape to another mesh. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and add an extra cube to my scene. I'm gonna move it right over here and I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit, and I want it to be intersecting the cube. See how it's going inside? That's good. In fact, I'm gonna make it more interesting by making it a little bit taller. So first we're gonna select this object, which I call the cutter, hold shift, select the target object, and press control minus. And there we go. And here is the new modifier that was just created, and we can see our small cube shape has been cut out of the larger cube. We can still select it here, and we can actually move it around. If we go back to the main mesh here, we do have other types of Boolean. There's intersection, which is kind of the opposite. This is basically where these two cubes meet. It's going to give us a result of the intersection. And there is union, which would join them together. If you hit apply, it's going to combine these meshes in a nice way, but it's not used very often. So I'm gonna put it back to difference. Now, if you select your cutter object, you can go into tab edit mode, select all the faces and control D, and you can move these pieces around to make basically a more complex cutting shape. Now, if I get out of edit mode, I still only have one object as the cutter, but that object is all of these little cubes like that. So we can make very complex cuts using more complicated meshes as the cutter. Okay, let's get rid of this Boolean modifier and we do have to delete the cutting object because it's still sitting there uh, showing as a box, but we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to select it and delete it. Let's reselect our main object and go to our last modifier of the video, which is the mirror modifier. This modifier will copy the mesh based on a certain axis. So right now it's on the X axis and you can see this is a total mirror image. If I grab some faces over here and begin editing, the same thing happens to the other side because it is mirrored along the X axis. From this view, it's left to right. The mesh is overlapping itself. So I'm going to press A to select this, use my move tool, and I'm just gonna move it out a little bit so it's no longer overlapping itself. In the modifier, if you turn up the merge limit, it will actually merge the two meshes together right in the middle so you don't have to make things perfectly exact. We can choose different axes. So instead of X, we can choose Y. Now it's mirrored on this axis. Or we can select Z. Now it's being mirrored up and down. 
or we can select all three and have a really interesting mesh, although it's still overlapping itself in a few different ways. So I'm going to move this away from the center, go to a side view and move it up. Now we have all these four corners being edited, but it's really just one mesh up here in this corner. So I can make changes to just one of these and it's being mirrored all across the entire new mesh that it's creating. That's a big time saver for all kinds of modeling, whether it's hard surface or organic stuff. Similar to the array modifier, we have a U and V offset so that we can avoid repeating patterns. If that's a problem with your texture, you can give a lot more variety and randomness if you play with these and get them to where you like them. All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something useful. If you have any questions, make sure to ask in the comments below. And thanks for watching this video on CG Cookie.